Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video since I'm all by myself. As you all know, my wife left. When did she leave? She left yesterday. Yeah, she left yesterday morning, which was Saturday morning. And she flew out to Denver, Colorado to spend a week with our daughter Beth and her family. So I'm alone. <laughs> it's a Saturday. It is May the 22nd, 2022. It is 516 at night. I turned off the my cell phone, so if it rings, I won't, you won't hear it. My wife did call this afternoon. Little Nora Jean, the youngest, was sleeping, and Beth and Andy and the kids were off at some birthday party. One of the kids' friends. So Carol had a, and Nora was taking a nap. So Carol, we talked for about, in about 40 minutes. So yeah, um, so I'm, I thought in this video, one thing I'm going to show you is I mentioned in my, one of my previous videos that about when I was in seminary, Reformed Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, I, um, I graduated in 1986 and I told you that when you graduate from seminary, you have like a special dinner and they give out awards for Greek and Hebrew and theology. And uh, I told you that I was really surprised when I was sitting at the table with all my classmates around me and their wives and family that I won the theology prize. Because I've never won anything in my life. <laughs> I've never won anything. But what I would do is I'm going to show you that after I won the award, I went, up, I went up to the Dean of Students and asked for the piece of paper that announced that I had won the Theology Prize. Now, I have it in this folder here. This is where it's like a photo album of, of my life up until I think we moved here about 33 years ago. It goes, the photos in here, it has the, but there is a photo here of, uh, of the piece of paper. <laughs> I just had it a minute ago. Let's see. So yeah, I won the theology prize and here it is. Now on this page, as I mentioned over the, in the past, when I was at Reformed Theological Seminary there in Jackson, Mississippi, Allen Ginsberg was giving a poetry reading at a small liberal arts black college. And I went and I heard him. And on the same page is the slip of paper of the announcement of me winning the Theology Prize is a picture of Allen Ginsberg I took with a camera. There's also a photo of me with Allen Ginsberg. You can see how young I was back then. See <laughs> how young I looked. But uh, but here is a slip of paper. I'll show you. I kept it. See? Well, it's backwards, but it says 1986 awards. Theology Award, Johnny Keene, Biblical Studies or New Testament, Bill Gleason. Bill Gleason was a ex-military guy. He was in the army and he was like in his late 30s, but he was really into Greek. So Bill got, he was married, had a family, and I got the Theology Prize, 1986. So I kept it because, I've, like I said, I've never won anything. I, you know, I've never won anything, <laughs> so I kept it. So I thought I'd show you, see that photo of me and Allen Ginsberg. <laughs> so um, in this video, I mentioned I got a lot of used books, but I'm going to show you some books. I think these are the books I got from the book nook the last couple weeks. And the one I got last time 
I just got one book. It was last Friday. It was this book. Uh, you can't see it. It says, The New History of Photography. It's a big It only costs $4. I was, I was really surprised. But I looked at Amazon, and they go for about $15 or $11. But it's a... It was published first in French and translated into German and English, but it does cover major American photographers and photography, early American, 20th century photography. It's a great table book. Uh, I really sit, I keep it up here on the coffee table by my, um, see here's a, here's a photo by Edward Strickland, who was a very famous uh, 20th century photographer. And this is his photo of Marine Dick Dietrich. Dietrich? Let's see, it's like, uh, so. So, anyway, it's a very fascinating book. As you all know, I'm into the history of photography. I like photography books, art books. But, so I picked this up. And then I also picked up Friday seven UCDs of Mary Chaplin Carpenter. Now, I'd never really been into her music, but I saw them at the book nook Friday and I started listening to them. And they're not, I, was, I really enjoyed them. I was really surprised. As, I, as you know, due to my uh, um, tinnitus, that buzzing in my ear I got from last summer. I can't listen to loud music. I can't listen to the music I listened to before, but I can listen to kind of Americana, a little pop, uh, singer-songwriter. She's more like a singer-songwriter. So I got those Friday. They're only a dollar a piece, so it was like $7 for seven CDs. And then I'll start showing the books I've gotten the last couple of weeks at the Book Nook. This came in a, a, a couple of weeks ago. A box of American history books came in. Colonial history, Civil War, Reconstruction, American Reconstruction after the Civil War. And one of the books was The Half Century of Conflict by Francis Parkman. Francis Parkman is a very famous American historian. If you see any of these books, they're worth getting. This is a uh, half century of conflict, the classic, classic account of the Anglo-French struggle for North America in the years before the French and Indian Wars. Introduction by Samuel Ellett Morrison, who is another famous American historian, his, American history historian, is Samuel Ellett Morrison. Any books by him too. But this is, uh, I have I have other books by Parkman, and I think I can't find some of them, but I have one I found. Now I have two. This is like a trilogy. Uh, I think this is the, you have The Conspiracy of Pontiac and Montecom and Wolf, which I had, but I can't find them down there anymore. And then I found Richard Hofstetter. I, I've collect his books. I never saw this one before, but it was in the box. This is America in 1750, A Social Portrait by Richard Hofstadter, another famous American historian, more into American intellectual history. But I, I didn't know he had this one, and I, I didn't have it in my Richard Hofstadter collection. And then I found a biography on the Louisiana governor, Huey Long, by T. Harry Williams. Uh, a mass, it says here, New York Times book review, a masterpiece of American biography, uh, the Washington Post, a brilliant, brawny, unforgettable picture of the most colorful as well as the most dangerous man to engage in American politics. As literature, this fractured portrait, factual portrait of the kingfish can stand in comparison with the fictional version in Robert P. Warren's famous historical novel, All the King's Men. He was governor of Louisiana, very colorful figure, and I thought I would just get it for my biography. I like reading about politicians, politics, 
And then this came in, uh, Three Who Made a Revolution. This is a, by a biography, uh, it's called Three Who Made a Revolution, a biography history by Bedroom, Bertram, Bertram T. Wolf. This was first published in 1948. This is a reprint. It's basically a biography, I think, on Lenin, uh, Lenin, let me see, it goes back here, um, okay, I think it's on Trotsky, Lenin, and Stalin, I think that's who it is. There's Lenin, there's Trotsky, and there's Stalin, yeah. There's Trotsky, Lenin, and Stalin. So that's what it's on, Russian history. And then I found two books from my Lincoln collection, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln and the Radicals by T. Harry Williams, who wrote the Huey Long biography. He also wrote this, Lincoln and the Radicals, uh, by T. Harry Williams, and then another book, on the Radical Republicans, Lincoln's Vanguard for Radical Justice by Hans L. Trifas. Yeah, I, when I dehauled my history books, I kept all my Lincoln books, most of them, in uh, Ulysses Grant and Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin D. Roosevelt and Washington, Jefferson, John Adams, Quincy Adams. I have other biographies on James Madison, but I kept some of those presidential biographies. I found that I collect the novels of Ronnie Dole. This is the cuts. I collect books on New York City, the history of New York City in the United States. This is Automats, Taxi Dances in Bonneville, Excavating Manhattan's Lost Places, Places and Leisure by David Freeman. Yeah, I collect books on New York City, New York, Paris, France, London, England, Istanbul, Cairo, Cairo, um, Cairo Athens, Greece, Rome, San Francisco, California. This is a, bio a memoir. I never heard of this memoir, but it's called Hold Still. And it's called Hold Still, a memoir with photographs by Sally Mann. She's a very famous photographer, a contemporary photographer. And this is her memoir and photos of her uh, her ancestors and her growing up. And it looked really interesting. It was only uh, $3, I think. This is a biography on Ben Bradley, who was a an editor, a journalist at the of the Washington Post. He broke the story of the Watergate scandal, the Washington Post. This is his autobiography, Newspapering and Other Adventures, A Good Life by Ben Bradley. I collect, I like books, like I said, on editors, journalists, newspapermen, and this came into the book nook. I read a, another book on him, not by him, but about him in the Washington Post. So I picked this up. And then I got two books by Peter Matheson. He, this is like travel writing, nature writing, Stan Rivers photographs by Hugo Van Longwick. And this is takes class, place in Africa on an African safari in uh, Tanzanitsa, the Sinus Game Reserve in southern Tanzanitsa. Sam Rivers is a beautiful account of a remarkable trip into the quintessential East African wilderness. I collect all the books by Peter Matheson, his novels, his nature books, his travel books. So I picked this one up at the book nook, and then I picked this one up. This uh, is called Peter Matheson, East of La Malango, in the land of Mas Mastanga. Uh, this is like a country on the border of Tibet and, and China. 
and this it's really nice the photography in it it was by the photography is by Thomas Lard it's really incredible photography if you're into that kind of it's a really nice book I've been I started reading it last night so I got this I was surprised I didn't know these existed and they came into the book nook and I immediately bought them they cost me three dollars a piece but like I said I collect Peter Matheson so those are the book nook books Peter Matheson San Rivers uh, Last of Lola Manga, something like that. A, an autobiography by Ben Bradley, who was an editor of the Washington Post, a journalist, newspaper man. A memoir by Sally Mann, Hold Still, a memoir and photographs by a very contemporary photographer. A history book on Manhattan, New York. Uh, three Who Made a Revolution, a, biograph a, bio a Biographical History by Bedram D. Wolf, uh, Stalin, Lenin, and Trotsky, Russian History, novel Cuts by Rodney Dow, who is, was born in Dublin in 1958. He is the author of nine acclaimed novels, two short story collections. Yeah, I collect him. I have a bunch of his novels. I didn't have this one. This is on the Radical Republicans during the administration of Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, uh, biography of Huey Long, Kingfish, uh, Louisiana, uh, nonfiction, Hofstetter, America in 1750, social history, half century of conflict, by Francis Parkman, 1700 to 1750 in America. And seven UCDs by Mary Chaplin Carpenter, Between Here and Gone. Mary Chaplin Carpenter, The Calling. Mary Chaplin Carpenter, Stones in the Road. She, wrote, she, put, she has put out 16 albums. She's on tour right now. She's 64 years old now. These are all more like in the 90s and early 2000s. Mary Chaplin, Place in the World. Mary Chaplin Carpenter, Time, Sex, Love. Uh, come On, Come On. This is her breakout album by Mary Chaplin Carpenter. Mary Chap Chaplin, Chaplin Carpenter, Party Doll and other favorites. So yeah, that's the book nook, and I'm writing in my diary, I'm on page 498 for the year 2022. I've been reading this afternoon, once again, Literary History United States. This came out in the late 40s. This is a revised, third revised edition. I really enjoy this, highly recommend it. If you're into literary history of America, as you all know, I'm a student of literary history throughout the beginning of the novel. <laughs> English novel history, French, Italian, medieval, <laughs> whatever. But I really have enjoyed reading this. I got it used for, I don't know, it, just, it was like five or six dollars. And it's a gem. It's a great book. And it's by Robert E. Spiller, Willard Thorpe, Thomas H. Johnson, Henry Sindel, Camby, Richard M. Lungwick. And they were all very prominent literary, American literary scholars of the early 20th century. Uh, just a, it's really a great book. So I've been reading this this afternoon. So that's the video. Uh, I can put those books away now down the lower level. I can listen to some music, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I have to be in a certain mood to listen to music. So now it's 535 Saturday evening. I'll probably keep reading the literary history of the United States. And I'll go into the night. My wife said she'd call me around 730 tonight. So we always... 
she calls and then we talk and then we have a time of prayer. So I hope you're having a good reading weekend. I hope that you're all well. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for world peace. Pray for rain. Pray that those forest fires will be under control. Pray that the drought will cease in the West. Pray that the Lord will come quickly and bring in the eternal kingdom of glory. So I thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your kind words. I do pray you're all having a good weekend. And until next time, bye.